Hi there, my name is Linda. Can anyone hear me? Well, well, let's just get started and perhaps someone could comment if they are hearing this uh, presentation. Um, this presentation is titled My Celiac Journey with Neur Neurological Issues. Um, so this is my first uh, Facebook live broadcast and I have two more um, joining, I have two more um, coming up later today. One at, I believe it's 7 p.m. and the other one at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Um, so just to do some housekeeping work, um, this, I am not a medical professional. This is about my celiac journey and some neurological issues that I ran into and also um, a presentation also about some of the common neurological issues that um, people run into uh, prior to their diagnosis of celiac disease. And um, a little bit about me, I've been diagnosed with celiac disease for 36 years. So I was diagnosed in the very early 1980s when celiac disease was more of a rare disease. And um, I was a teenager at the time, you know, going through puberty and uh, it was quite an interesting experience because no one knew what celiac disease was. And so they thought it was a whole bunch of other conditions and I was having neurological problems at the time. So I was seeing a neurologist. So I'll speak more to that um, in a little while. Other things that I do, I am a volunteer for the Canadian Celiac Association Vancouver chapter. I am located in Vancouver, BC. And um, I have been a volunteer of the CCA chapter for, um, about, oh, since about 2003, and I've done lots of different jobs at the chapter from president to treasurer to membership coordinator. And I currently uh, manage the social media uh, Facebook group that we have, uh, which is a great source of inspiration and community for the people in the um, BC area, except for the three other chapters that are located in BC. So we cover um, BC and Yukon uh, with regards to any questions people might have with regards to um, celiac disease, dining out, and um, basically any question someone wants to ask. So um, saying this is my journey, um, I will start there. And um, so when I was about 14, I started experiencing um, several dizzy spells and um, fainting um, and I had some small seizures happening at that point in time and I was a figure skater and I was having problems with um, walking and maintaining my balance which of course as a figure skater is really important that you have good balance and I was having some problems jumping and being able to land um, and still being in balance. So my parents took me to um, several neurologists and they decided that I had seizures. So I was put on um, some seizure medication, which I I distinctly remember having some very significant side effects at that point in time. And I was in high school and um, it was hard to study and uh, the uh, brain fog that came with that seizure medication at that time, I would explain it as brain fog, uh, was um, a, a big challenge for, for, for me. Anyway, um, that continued for a while, but the seizures and the dizzy spells and the imbalance never really stopped. And I tried going uh, to, instead of going to university, I tried going to a local college in Vancouver and um, I just wasn't 
doing well health wise. I was also working at McDonald's and of course McDonald's having such wheat in uh, wheat food. Um, I loved McChicken McNuggets. They had come out about that point in time. And one night I had eaten about eight chicken McNuggets and my mom found me passed out in the bathroom because I had had so much diarrhea from eating chicken McNuggets. So symptoms were starting to change and with the diarrhea and passing out and things like that. And one day I went to school and I was just too sick. So I went to my doctor's office, which was very nearby and saw the locum. And I also had canker sores in my mouth. I forgot to mention that. I used to have a plethora of canker sores. And I'll never forget this old doctor who was a locum for my family doctor. He looked like he was 90 years old and he was British. And he took one look at my canker sores and I told him some of my other symptoms and he saw the neuro neurological reports and just said to me right then and there, you have celiac disease. I had no idea what he was talking about. And you got to remember this is the early 80s. And he said, you need to see a gastroenterologist. And so off I went to the gastroenterologist, had the scope and was diagnosed and saw a dietitian right away. And she and I still have the typed up um, piece of paper of what I was to eat which was very basic of, you know, simple rice, ch chicken, meat, vegetables, and basically no bread because back then, other than energy foods in Seattle, there were no other gluten-free vendors on record at that time. And uh, so my mom was very perplexed as to what we could eat and um we just sort of plugged along together you could get rice flour and you could get potato starch and i made some birthday cakes that my sister lovingly called uh, pox hockey pox because they were chocolate and um with rice flour and potato starch or potato flour and very very dense anyway um I, I was able to, you know, get well within about a year and I went back to school and got a um, degree in hotel and restaurant management. And from there, I worked at uh, what is now a Fairmont Hotel in Vancouver called the Hotel Vancouver. And I actually, because I was working a uh, graveyard shift, um, I trained them how they had to feed me uh, because a meal was part of working the graveyard shift. So in the uh, late uh, 80s, they learned what a person with celiac disease needed. And it was one of the uh, safe places to go within Vancouver if you had celiac disease because they understood from serving me from when I worked graveyard shift to when I changed into management in the hotel. And then I transferred to a job with the software company and I traveled for eight years full time around North America, um, Australia and New Zealand, which was great. And I managed to get United to change their meal on their airplane because they were always substituting the rice with orzo pasta. And once I got tripped up by that and got fairly sick on a flight. Anyway, um, just looking at my notes here, um, that's basically my journey with celiac disease. Uh, I, you know, continue to eat gluten free. Um, I do not eat a lot of junk food because when I was diagnosed, there was not a lot of gluten free products on the on, on the market at that point in time. So I believe in eating a fairly natural diet. I have two pieces of bread a week and that's when I have a cheese open face cheese sandwich on Saturday and Sunday with my husband. And other than that, I eat cottage cheese and fruit and chicken and rice and vegetables and um, things like that. So I eat a fairly natural diet. 
Um, and um, so that's really what I, my philosophy with the gluten-free diet is, is if you um, shop around the outside of the store, you don't really have to go to the inside that much. And if you go to the inside, there are plenty of things that are gluten-free these days naturally that you can um, eat. So, um, let's talk about uh, the neurological um, part of celiac disease. So, I've explained some of the symptoms that I had. Um, I have some information here from some studies and things like that about celiac disease and neurological um, symptoms. Um, first of all, the list of symptoms related to celiac disease uh, can cover the entire body. And while gastrointestinal symptoms are often the ones that doctors and gastroenterologists focus on, um, the nervous system can be affected by untreated celiac disease. And there are many patients with neurological symptoms and their doctors just don't make the connection when they are reporting that they have neurological symptoms and doctors are always looking for it to be a gut um, challenge that uh, needs to be diagnosed. Uh, there is a lack of general awareness of the neurological manifestations of celiac disease among patients as well as physicians. And adult patients often present with neurological symptoms in the absence of geo, geointestinal symptoms. So celiac disease may not come to mind, according to this research study. Um, and um, so it's important if you haven't been diagnosed with celiac disease and you're feeling um, variety of symptoms which I'm going to go into now that you do ask your doctor to uh, talk about uh, different tests that can be done or to see a neurologist because more and more neurologists are um, putting people on gluten-free diet. Unfortunately I have been in the hospital um, on a neurological ward and being a person on this ward of 32 people being the person with celiac disease, they actually had four or five other people trying out the gluten-free diet uh, on this neurological ward because they were recognizing that some of the symptoms might be um, addressed by being on a gluten-free diet. That was very interesting and I talked at length with my neurologist about why they were putting these particular people on a gluten-free diet. So. The, the match is definitely out there um, in, and I'm in BC at the, um, the, the specialized hospital. So um, only in, re and then this study goes on to say, only in recent years, we have begun to understand gluten sensitivity. So this isn't really only isolated to celiac disease. Uh, a gluten mediated immune reaction that exists separate from separate from celiac disease and gluten allergic reactions gluten sensitivity is estimated to occur at six times greater frequency than celiac disease and is believed to be characterized by a different type of immune mediated reaction so uh, we all know that celiac disease is an autoimmune condition but there's also um, there's also other gluten disorders such as gluten sensitivity and they're saying that these neurological conditions are not only isolated to celiac disease but other conditions that are also gluten related can also be having similar um, reactions um, not just in the gut but also uh, neurological. So the relationship of celiac disease to neurological, so the relationship to celiac disorders 
to neurological and psychiatric complications has been observed for over 40 years. So longer than I've been diagnosed, this has been observed, which is just an amazing fact to think about. Yet they're only in the last probably four or five years coming out with papers talking about celiac disease, gluten sensitivity, and how it relates to neurological issues. So how common are neurological symptoms in patients with newly diagnosed and established celiac disease? So from a neurological perspective, symptoms are very common. Up to 61% of patients with newly diagnosed celiac disease had neurological symptoms that included headaches, 45%, balance problems, 26%, and sensory symptoms, 14%. These were patients presenting to a gastroenterologist. Are neurological symptoms found across all conditions where people have had an issue with gluten? The presence or not of gut damage as seen in celiac disease makes no difference to the severity or type of neurological manifestation. So that's really interesting. So whether the gut is damaged or not, you can still have neurological symptoms. And from the research, those presenting with neurological symptoms, how, on average, how long have they, does it take for them to be diagnosed? And they are often diagnosed 10 years later than those presenting with gastrointestinal uh, diseases. So if you take the fact that celiac disease caught, takes about 10 years to be diagnosed, those with neurological symptoms can take up to 20 years to be diagnosed. And does the gluten-free diet result in a full resolution of symptoms in cases of neurological conditions? And it says in this study that um, the sooner the diagnosis and treatment of neurological related conditions are made, the more likely it is for the patient to improve and avoid permanent disability. So I mentioned a couple of the neurological symptoms when I was talking about my journey. Just to go on as to what some of these symptoms are, one of them, and probably the most common one, is peripheral neuropathy, which means the inflammation of the nerves in the body. So those nerves can be um, in your back, going down your arms, your legs. Those are the most popular places, but they can also occur in the trunk of your body. And often folate, vitamin 12, and vitamin E, sorry, vitamin B12 and vitamin E are nutrients important for nerve function if you're looking at um, the type of vitamins that um, are often recommended. And then another symptom um, that people um, who are yet to be diagnosed with CD have is a higher incidence of epilepsy, which I mentioned. Um, people with having seizures prior to being diagnosed. Both um, celiac disease and epilepsy are common disorders in the general population though. So while they're, they do notice a, um, a significant um, tie-in, they actually have not proven for sure that there is a tie between um, epilepsy and celiac disease. And then a portion of patients with migraine headaches may be, have undiagnosed celiac disease. And um, especially when the migraines are chronic and irretractable. So severe migraine headaches, those people should be tested for celiac disease. And then lastly is a condition that is fairly serious and um, is not found in a lot of people prior to celiac disease being diagnosed, but um, it definitely is out there and that's called gluten ataxia, which is another gluten related disorder. And if you perform the screening test, the TTG test, 
often it is negative but there is no damage to the intestine or on the biopsy but ataxia refers to the poor coordination of movements and an unsteady gait like i had but we didn't know back then it was called ataxia gluten ataxia is an autoimmune mediated disease triggered by the indigestion of gluten genetically in genetically susceptible individuals the treatment for gluten ataxia is a gluten-free diet which can improve the ataxia and prevent its progression so those are the th the four types of neurological symptoms that are most found um, in uh, celiac disease and gluten disorders there are a couple of others which is depression and mood disorders anxiety disorders attention deficit hyperactive disorder or adhd and autism spectrum disorders these are sort of in the more remotish category of people who are yet to be diagnosed with a gluten disorder in the family of gluten disorders and um, those people have been put on gluten-free diets and um, have in some cases have have seen progress or gotten better with their symptoms but not necessarily been diagnosed with celiac disease so if anyone has any questions or comments i'm going to take a break here to see um, if i can answer any questions and if not um, i'm going to c conclude this up in a few minutes thanks all for joining me i see all your comments thank you so um, first of all, I'd like to thank Shar Canada for generously sponsoring this day. And if you've enjoyed this session, please consider making a donation to the Canadian Celiac Association. The CCA is the voice of the celiac community across Canada. As a national charity, they coordinate events like these to bring accurate information, support to those with celiac disease and gluten intolerance and invest in research for treatments and cures. You can make a donation by visiting www.celiac.ca. Speaking of the website, you'll find a host of information and resources for you and your healthcare professional if you go to celiac.ca. Now, let's see, I have a couple of questions. Could the neurological symptoms be associated with a B12 deficiency? Well, I'm not a medical person, I'm just a lay person, but I have had B12 deficiencies and I currently take B12 um, uh, pills each day. So um, I have other neurological symptoms because since I was diagnosed, I've been in a fairly serious accident um but most of these neurological symptoms are pre-diagnosis and it is also known that people with celiac disease can suffer with a um, b12 deficiency after they're diagnosed and so it is often recommended that people with celiac disease do take a b12 supplement hope that answers your question sarah leah um, is it possible to experience numbness as a result of celiac disease? Um, I don't know enough about numbness as a result of celiac disease. I know you can experience um, as part of the uh, neuropathy numbness prior to being diagnosed with celiac disease, but numbness can result from many different um, medical conditions, um, you know, problems with your back things like that it's best for you to go talk to your family doctor um, more about experiencing numbness does anyone else have any questions
Do I know how long it usually takes to see improvement in peripheral neuropathy after starting a gluten-free diet? Well, my peripheral neuropathy, um, mind you, I was a teenager, um, it probably took about two years for it to settle down. I hope that helps you, Matt. Um, I think everyone's different, though, depending on where the neuropathy is being, um, is, is happening in the feet versus the arms versus the torso. Well, thank you very much for joining me. I don't want to overstate my time. Um, I hope you all have a good day, and I will see you again in a couple of hours on my next topic. Thank you very much, and have a good day.